what's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Edmund Edmonton I said that wrong Moreno versus Al Bazi now first things first please hit that like button for me subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't turned on the notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesdays when we do some shows on Saturdays all that good stuff Leave some comments below on the fights that you're looking forward to, how well you did at 308, um, what bet you're looking at for this card. There's a lot of good ones, a lot of close fights, a lot of closely lined fights, nothing super out there crazy. I want to say there might not even be a, um, a minus 300 favorite at the moment. Let me look real quick. I, I don't want to lie. No, there is not. So that is a little wild to me. And um, yeah, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K picks. You can get all my early UFC content, uh, cont content. Um, I also do other bets for NFL, um, soccer, and NBA just started up. I do a little bit of that too. Also, I do UFC survivor pools. Um, one just ended. So we're going to start one up um for this card so if you're interested on playing you can join for free and play or you can support 5.99 a month and get all my stuff for that and that's a decent price so check it out uh supports the channel nothing super crazy 5.99 a month so let me click this off there we are i wanted to get that out of the way but yeah so last night was ufc 308 fun card um, not 308 i'm sorry well, did I... yeah it is 308 wasn't it I, I am going crazy. It's been a, a long day today already. So, yeah, 308 was last time. <laughs> Sorry. And it was interesting. So let's go to the – um. let me get out of here and go to the right thing that I'm trying to do. There we are. And let's check – let's go over this real quick, and then we will get into the fun stuff with um, Edmonton. Edmonton. But yeah, first fight of the night was Renat versus Leal. Um, everybody thought everybody and their mother thought that Renat lost that fight, and I was one of them. Um, the, the, the judging scorecards were correct, but it was the wrong fighter. I thought Leal won 29-28 at the very worst, and they gave it to Renat. And I just saw some people on Twitter, saw some people on live shows saying how like I don't understand why. People think that the judging at certain places can just go for the other fighter or the hometown guys just because, well, this is one of them. So it does happen. And should it happen? No, it shouldn't, clearly. But it does happen because this was outright a robbery. So it is what it is. Um, Ishmael looked pretty good. Bruno did not look good. I'm never picking Bruno again, but good win from Ishmael. I'm not going to, that's a kind of a boring fight. Uh, Basharat looked good too, as well. Kind of close fight, but I did think he won. Victor. Hugo needs to get that weight figured out because he is pretty good. He's pretty decent, actually. But Basharat was just better. Um, Kent, here we go. Chris Barnett, um, do not jump up and down like Brian Ortega before the fight because I, I saw that. We were on the live show. We pointed that out. And then look what happened. His freaking L or either Achilles or ankle or knee blew out. And he was wincing. He didn't even do anything. And he lost because of that. And, of course, I bet the over in that fight. And look what happened. It didn't even get a chance to go over because Chris Barnett injured himself when he was being all crazy right before the fight. So little note, if you're a UFC fighter or an MMA fighter in general, do not jump up and down right before you fight. That's two times recently that's happened. But Kennedy won. I mean, a good win, I guess. Interesting fight. Uh, Magomedal versus Bruno. Um it went down how I thought it was going to, but I did not think Magomedov was going to get a sub, obviously. And I, I did think he can get those takedowns late, which he did, um, and he controlled him, and he got the win. So good win from him, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. His cardio still, he needs to work on his cardio a bit still, but it is what it is. Fight of the night for sure, Rebeski versus Oral Bay. I thought Rebeski won 29-28. I know it was a split, but it is what it is. It was kind of a close-ish fight. I'm not worried about the robbery there, but um, Mateus was just landing the better shots on the feet. Um, and yeah, Orobe couldn't get that wrestling going at all. So that's what I, I, that was a bad pick, bad bet by me, but it is what it is. Another, uh, leg injury that kind of happened out of nowhere. Jeff Neal, good win, I guess. KO. That's all I'm going to say about that. It looks like RDA messed up his knee doing something. I don't know, but it is what it is. Uh, Aslan versus Raphael didn't last too long. I don't know. 
it is what it is. Good one from Aslan. Uh, KO or finish of the night came from Ashara. Armin was looking good. He looked good in round one. I thought he won. He outstruck him almost two to one. And then round two hit. And then he was kind of losing that round. And then that double back, double spinning back fist get landed and got him. So um, good win from Shara. I was on the Petrosian side as a bet. I had plus three and a half. I didn't think there was going to be a finish, but there was. Um, but yeah, fun fight. Um, interesting fight. Murphy versus Ige. I kind of thought Ige won that fight. I kind of thought he won round three. I'm not going to say robbery, but it is what it is. Um, Lerone continues to make every one of his fights very close, except maybe you don't want to say that Barbosa fight, but a lot of the three round fights are very close. And um, I just thought Ige won round three with the control, with the grappling. He pretty much controlled him for the whole round until like the last 15 seconds, maybe. And then Murphy landed a couple good shots, but not like he like knocked down Ige or anything, but it is what it is. Um, there's just no consistency, whether it's one way or another. So, I mean, I'm not mad, but it is what it is. Um, Uncle Ive versus Rockage, kind of a boring fight again. Uncle Ive won, clearly, but again, I don't, who knows if he's going to get a title shot. So, good win from Uncle Ive. Uh, crazy event there. Robert Whitaker lost by submission to Chimaev. Um, basically broke his jaw or dislocated his jaw or whatever, not or whatnot. Wild. Wild. I was wondering why he was tapping so quick, because... Like Chimaev literally just got it underneath, like I got it on his chin and he just tapped immediately. So, but now we know why he dislocated his jaw, Robert. So good win from Chimaev and we'll see what happens. I still will continue to say if the fight does get out of round one, he's going to be in trouble. So luckily he was able to finish it in round one. So that's what it is. So we'll see what happens with the next fight and crazy, crazy fun fight with Taporia versus Max Holloway. Taporia is the man. He knocks out Max for the first time in Max's career. And this dude has power, legit power. He can literally knock out anybody in the featherweight division. And he's just dangerous on the feet. He's durable. Good. Car. I think he has good cardio, but um, he's got good grappling, good wrestling. But, you know, he's a good boxer. So why try to take it on the mat when you think you have the better boxing? So clearly he did. And clearly you knocked out Max. A good win from Taporia. Uh, interested to see what happens with him next. He said Volkanovski's next, which if that's the case, I'm going to be picking uh, Ilya. So it is what it is. Good fight. Good card all around. Good fun card. Um, for my picks, I ended up going um, 10 and 3. My losses were Oral Bay, Silva, and Whitaker. So kind of some dumb picks there, but it, Oral Bay was a close fight, but Whitaker and Silva were not close at all. Um Let's see. And then my bets. Let me get to my bets. That's what I was looking for. Bets. Here they are. I had eight of them. I won four, lost four, but luckily I was able to come away with 0.54 units profit. Um, again, some dumb bets, but it is what it is. And um, yeah, I tried to take some shots. Didn't work out too well. Um, yeah. Again, don't tell my bets, please. Thank you. And uh, we'll go to the, we'll move on up to, UFC Edmonton. So we have 14 fights again. Let's see if hopefully, fingers crossed, all of them are um, will stay intact. Hopefully everybody doesn't post their early parlays early. So we'll see what happens with that. Moving on down the line to the very first fight, which is going to be Jack Shore versus Yusuf Zalal. Fun fight to start the night off if they keep it this way because I'm in, it's an interesting fight. But to start the night off, there would be some other ones. Anyways, Jack Shore, very good grappler. He does have pretty good wrestling, good takedowns, good takedown defense. Um, his striking is just okay. Um, he does have decent kicks, but um, nothing crazy with the striking. He's more so a wrestler, grappler guy, but yeah, it is what it is. Zalal, well-rounded guy. Um, he looks like he's improving. His striking is, has always been pretty good. He does stay at range very well. He show, he's showing some good wrestling and grappling um, with his second stint in the ufc with two rear naked jokes or two submissions um yeah he's improved a lot since his um first stint in the ufc when he and then he went down to the regionals and was finishing everybody and he continued to finish everybody in the ufc um i'm not 100 percent sure if he's going to finish jack shore but i do think he wins this fight more times than not so give me Zalal to win. I'm going to say by decision. I just like his striking more so. And I think if Jack Shore does try to go for the wrestling and grappling, I think Zalal is improved vastly in that department. And I think he'll be okay. And maybe I can see some Zalal grappling as well, maybe later in the fight. But um, 
striking. I like Zalal all day. I just think he's also more dangerous too than Jack Shore, but I'm gonna say by decision. So give me Zalal. Um, pretty confident in this one, actually. Next one's gonna be Jamie. Jamie Lynn Horth versus Ivana Petrovic. And let me get there. Jamie Lynn Horth has pretty good striking, solid power in her hands, decent takedown defense. Um, she was normally a bantamweight. She did fight at flyweight against Veronica Hardy in a very, very close decision that maybe could have went either way. Um, but she's very strong. She's going to be the stronger fighter in this matchup for sure. She's pretty big. Like I said, she used to be a bantamweight. Um, so and then we got Petrovic. Good grappling. Striking is okay as well. She's um, more so a grappler. Doesn't really have the power in her hands, but she's got decent volume. She can be a little hittable on the feet. Hasn't really fought the greatest competition. I know she beat Na Liang, but let's be honest. Everybody beats La Na Liang. Sorry, Brady. Um, she did lose to Luana Carolina. That was a tough fight for her. But like at, in the regional scene, she wasn't fighting a lot of good, great people. So, um, you know, this fight could play out close, but I'm going with Horth. I think she's going to win this fight. I think she's going to be stronger. I think she can dictate where this fight goes. She's going to land the harder shots on the feet, I think. And then if she wants to get takedowns, I think she can get takedowns. I don't think Petros Pet oh, Petrovic will get those takedowns that she needs for her grappling. She's just not going to be strong enough. And she doesn't really have the greatest wrestling technique for takedowns. It's more so trips along in the cage. So... I like Horth on the feet more. I think she'll land the harder shots. And if Horth wants to take this fight to the mat, I think she can. And I think she'll stay on top and win the minutes that way. So give me Horth to win. I'm going to say by decision. And uh, we'll go from there. Next one, Chad and Helliger versus Cody Gibson. It's going to be a fun fight here. Um, let's see. And Helliger, well-rounded guy. He likes to push forward. He does have, he does have some power in his hands. Um, good grappling takedown defense is a little bit of an issue though for him. Um, but he's very durable, has good cardio and yeah, just a, a solid overall guy. Both guys are 37 years old. Just want to throw that out there too. He is going to have a height and reach disadvantage, four inches of height and seven inches of reach. So it's something to think about in this fight, but Cody Gibson also well-rounded solid striker, more so a striker. Takedown defense is just okay. Very durable. He does have okay grappling. So if it does get to the mat, he's not like a fish out of water. But he is mainly a striker, like I said. So this is a fun fight. Um, I got to go Cody Gibson, though. Um, he's just going to be the bigger guy. I think he's going to have... Um, both guys are pretty hittable, but Chad's going to have to get inside the pocket or go for some takedowns. And I just don't know how that's going to look. To be honest, I don't know if it's going to be enough. I think Cody Gibson... Is, is a good striker. He can stay at range. And if he wants to get into a brawl, I think Cody is totally fine with doing that too. So I hope he doesn't. He can stay at range more. I think he can and then try to stuff the takedowns. And I think he'll win this fight. I'm going to say by decision, both guys are super tough and durable. I'll be looking at that prop once that drops. But I like Cody Gibson here to win by decision. And here comes the... Oh, I lied. One more, one more fight, and I'll say what I wanted to say. Uh, we got Siri City versus um, Garrett Armfield. The next one, they might have changed the order on me here, but Seed is a good striker. He does have good power in his hands. Okay, grappling, more so a striker though. Takedown defense is pretty good. He's pretty durable. He can be a little chinny and get dropped, but he has pretty good recoverability and stuff like that. Um, Armfield's well-rounded guy. Good striking. He can wrestle if need be. He has a pretty good volume. He's tough. He's durable. I know he lost by submission against Brady. He stand Brady. He stand was putting on that pace and uh, kind of, I don't want to say gassed Armfield out, but he was tired. And then Brady was able to out grapple him. So um, not going to happen here. Totally two different fighters here. City's going to want to probably keep it on the feet. And then I think Armfield is the one that's going to be whether he wants to keep it on the feet or not, or he wants to take this fight to the mat. So going to take a shot here. I do think this fight's going to be very close and very fun. But give me Garrett Armfield from the dog. I'm going to take a shot here. I think this is close to a 50-50 fight. I just like Arm Armfield's wrestling upside here. Um, if he wants to try, if he gets in trouble on the feet, I think he can implement some wrestling. 
and um, not 100% sold on CD's chin. Maybe he gets dropped. Like, I think in his last fight against Ramon Tavares, he was looking good until he got dropped and it was a split decision. Some people said CD should have won, but if he didn't get dropped, he probably would have won. So give me Armfield to win again. I'll say by decision, I think there's going to be a pretty decent amount of decisions here, but very close fight. Uh, I'm just going to go with the dog here. All right, here is the stretch of fights where it could be a little bit of uh, sketchy. And here we are. We got Roman or Alexander Romanov versus uh, Rodrigo Nascimento. And Romanov is a very good wrestler, very good takedowns, strong and powerful takedowns, great ground and pound once he's on top. Striking is just okay. Does have okay power if he lands, but the, he's not very technical. He does slow down after a round and a half as most heavyweights do it just depends on how crazy he goes in round one if you see him going for takedown after takedown after takedown after takedown he's probably going to gas himself out um nascimento no he is known to be a pretty good grappler but he really hasn't shown us lately um his takedowns aren't the greatest he does have good submissions for the heavyweight division striking is just pretty okay as well um kind of low volume doesn't really um, separate himself in the striking department here. So this is just a weird fight. It's tough to call. I would favor Rodrigo ever so slightly on the feet, but on the mat, probably, you know, I had to go with Romanov, but both these guys slow down a little bit as the fight goes on. Maybe Ro Romanov a little bit more. Both guys are pretty durable. If this line is set at over one and a half, I'm going to look at that, but I'm just going to lean Romanov. I am not confident whatsoever in this pick. Um, this is probably the least confident pick that I have on the card. So I just think Romanov can get the wrestling going at least early on. And if this fight does go to decision, it's going to be a close one. I'm going to tell you that right now. So um, Romanov to win decision. If he does get him out of there, it'll be like a ground and pound, um, maybe head and arm choke, something like that. So like I said, this one's a tough one for me, and I kept going back and forth, but I'm just going to lean Romanov and move on to the next one. <laughs> next one, another fun fight, but this is going to be a very interesting fight. Charles Jourdain versus Victor Henry, and I want to also mention first, too, this fight is at Bantamweight, and usually Charles Jourdain is a featherweight. Um, Yeah. So is this at Bantamweight? Let me just double check. Yeah, Bantamweight fight. So that's something to think about in this fight. Jordan's a solid striker, likes to push forward, very entertaining. So he's pretty durable, pretty tough. He did get knocked out in his last fight, but that was Gene Silva. A little bit worrisome um, about his durability, but luckily he's fighting Victor Henry. But Jordan has a very good guillotine. He does he can grapple. Takedown defense isn't the greatest, but he does have a good get-up game, good cardio. He is kind of a slow starter at times. He does um, first round, he usually loses, but then he gets into the fight after round two, and he's there in round three. He usually wins round three. Victor Henry, solid striker, throws tons of volume. He's got good cardio. He's durable, too. He's never been finished in the UFC. Um, he also has good takedown defense. I see this fight playing out on the feet. Um, you know, Jordan probably will be the bigger fighter at 135, but he's going down to 135, and that's a little worrisome for me. Victor Henry being at 37, almost 10 years difference is also worrisome for me. Again, this is why the red flags are happening here and there. Both guys aren't really the tr most trustworthy fighters as well. So... I'm going to lean Victor Henry. I've been, I'm not, I've been picking and or betting against Jordan for a while. And I don't, it's not because I don't like him. I just feel like a lot of these matchups are very tough for him. And this is another tough matchup that I think can go either way. It's closely lined for a reason. Um, I see the red flags on both sides, but I'm going to lean Victor Henry to win. I'm going to say by decision, um, Henry's not the most fin biggest finisher, but he's super durable. Um, Jordan also does make some, interesting fight iq moments in some of his fights too so like i said it's tough to trust jordan i know he's dangerous always with that guillotine but henry's never been subbed or knocked out so gotta go henry you can look at the plus three and a half spread whoever has that plus three and a half spread might be a good bet here but um 
going to go with Henry to win. Very close fight. Interesting both sides, but leaning that way. Next one is going to be um, Ariane Lipsky versus Jasmine Jesu Davicius. Interesting fight as well. Uh, Lipsky's a solid striker. She does have good power, good elbows, uh, Muay Thai, all that good stuff. Good takedown defense. Um, she does have sneaky submissions if she does get the fight to the mat, but she's not really like more so a grappler, if you want to say. She wants to keep it on the feet. She's a striker. Um, Jesu Davicius, though, very good wrestler, very good in the clinch, very strong. Um, her striking has improved. She does get a little sloppy as the fight goes on when she gets a little tired, but she's very durable. She always pushes forward. Um, so yeah, I think Jasmine's going to be able to get the wrestling going. I mean, I'm, let's let's uh, say say how it is. Um, if Lipsky can stuff the takedowns, she'll have a good shot to win this fight. But Jasmine's going to be there for three rounds. Um, I believe this fight goes to decision, like. 99 out of 100 times because Jasmine's fights, that's what usually happens unless they gas out in the third. But uh, Lipsky's pretty good. Um, I think she'll be able to survive if she gets taken down and stuff like that. But I think Jasmine just gets that wrestling going and wins 29-28 or 30-27. So Jasmine by decision is the pick. Pretty confident in this one as well. And um, yeah, it's just a style with the with Jasmine. She's one of those. It's hard to beat her. You have to outstrike her and keep the fight on the feet. And I just don't know if Lipsky can keep the fight on the feet. She she probably will outstrike her, but I just don't know about the first part. Next one, very interesting fight here. Uh, Eamon Zahabi versus Pedro Munoz. And Zahabi is a well-rounded guy himself. Good striking. He's got good power in his hands. He can grapple if need be, but he does like to keep it on the feet. Takedown defense is pretty good, but luckily he doesn't worry about any takedowns here. Um, he can be a little low volume looking for the counters. He does accept being pushed back because, um, but he probably will get pushed back a lot here. But like I said, he look he looks for those counters. He does have good power, but Munoz is a high volume striker, pushes forward all the time. He's got very good leg kicks. He does have good grappling, but more so a striker, he wants to keep it on the feet, very durable. He can be a little hittable um, at times, um, but Again, like I said, he does have pretty good grappling that he doesn't really use that often. So interested to see what happens here. Both guys in their mid to upper 30s. So at the age thing is not too much. The hobby will be a little bit bigger, which is usually the case for Munoz. Very close fight. Again, I'm just, and then usually when I pick Munoz, he usually loses in some way. But I'm picking Munoz again. I think he's going to be able to just out volume Zahabi. Zahabi's going to have to land some very good shots or and or drop Munoz. And Munoz, I believe, has never been finished in the UFC. Zahabi, you know, I don't think Zahabi is going to get KO'd, but he's only been KO'd once as well. So this is going to fight probably going to go to decision. Whoever has the plus three and a half spread is probably also a good bet. I'll be looking at that. But for this fight, going to lean Munoz to win by decision. Uh, I don't think I said any finishes yet, but I promise you one is coming up right here with Mike Malott versus Trevin Giles. And um, everyone's going to remember Mike Malott gassing out in the last 10 seconds of his fight against Neil Magny that he was winning clearly, but it is what it is. Mike, Mike Malott though, Good striking, good power in his hands. He has very good sneaky grappling with sneaky submissions, good guillotine. Um, takedowns are pretty good. Wrestling is pretty good. He is pretty tough. He's pretty durable. But we got to say now, he can gas out in the third round. It happened in his last fight. But if he could have held out for 30 more seconds, man, he would have won that fight. But he was just gas. And I don't know if the wrestling was what did it or whatnot, but it is what it is. And that's happens trevin giles though solid striker good boxing good one twos down the middle he does have good power in his hands um wrestling is okay but he's gonna keep it on the feet more so than not okay takedown defense he can be a little hittable on the feet um his chin is a little questionable as well could be a little dusty so i think malat wins this one i think he does find a finish whether it's a club and sub um whether it's a knockout on the feet whether it's maybe he gets the fight to the mat and he gets a guillotine so 
I'll say him a lot by submission in the first or second round. I think he gets it done early this time. I don't think he's going to wait around. I don't think he's also going to implement a, a crazy wrestle heavy game plan like he did against uh, Magni anyways. So yeah, I'm a lot to win by finish first or second round. I'll say submission. Next one, Mark Andre Barrio versus Dustin Stoltzfus. And Barrio, well-rounded guy, good wrestling, good pace. He likes to push forward, good cardio, good takedowns. He's just good everywhere. I'll just be honest. Good striking, good power. Not amazing anywhere. Um, Stoltzfus, though, I would say not awful anywhere, but he's not. He's an average fighter everywhere. So average striking, average wrestling. He can mix in some takedowns. He's hittable on the feet. He can get cracked. He's been, um, you know, Bruno Ferreira fight crazy. He did look okay against Puna, but Puna's not that great. He was knocked out against Abus. Dwight Grant fight. Dwight Grant's not even in the UFC. So, yeah, uh, Mark Andre's fighting the better competition. I think he's also the better fighter here. So I think he wins this fight pretty clearly um wouldn't be shocked if it's a third round finish but again i'm going to go with decision stolfitz is pretty durable you have to really 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 crack him that's really not andre's game is to try to go for finishes he doesn't really have that explosive striking he's more so i'm gonna break you in the second and third rounds with your with his cardio and um, win that way so if there is a finish i can see a third round finish but I'm going to go Barrio by decision. I think he wins this one pretty clearly. I like the price tag. It's fine. Um, we'll go from there. Next one. I don't know why this one's on the main card, but here we are. Kyle Machado versus Brendan or Bredson Ribeiro. Machado's well. Um, yeah, Machado. He's more so a striker. He's coming down from heavyweight. He, this is his first fight at, in the UFC. At light heavyweight, I think he's fought a couple times on the regional scene. or mo I can't remember if it's a couple or most of his fights were, but he's coming down the light heavyweight one way or another. Good striking, uh, good volume. He can slow down a little bit, but again, that was a heavyweight, so we'll see what happens in this fight. Not really more so a grappler, but he's not a fish out of water if he does, but this fight's probably going to play out in the feet. And we got um, Ribeiro. And he's a good striker. He's got good power. He can grapple sometimes. He's a little hittable on the feet. Sometimes he likes to go for those wild, crazy KOs. He did have. He did show a pretty good fight against uh, Magomed in his last fight. Very close. I know it was decision majority. But, um, yeah, this is an interesting fight. I'm going to lean Machado. Not confident whatsoever. It's probably my second least confident pick. Maybe first. It could rival the other one that I said it was. I was very low confident in. But... I just think he's the more technical striker. Ribeiro needs to swing a wild and crazy KO shot to win, maybe. But um, Machado on the feet, I just think he survives, lands better shots. And a little worried for him, though, coming down the light heavyweight for the first time. It's always a thing for me. I want to see it before I bet it and or pick it. But I can't, unfortunately. Not betting this fight at all, though. But give me Machado to win. I'm going to say by decision. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. There's just a lot of decisions. I don't see a lot of finishes in this card. So there will be like four, but I just don't see them. So which I know by decision. Here is a finish. Derek Lewis versus Joanna, Jonata, Denise. And yeah, we know who Derek Lewis is. The beast, the black beast, powerful striker. He is kind of low volume, though, looking for that KO shot. But lately, he's been doing pretty good. Um, doesn't have to worry about takedowns in this fight. So his cardio is probably going to be good. He's always going to be live for a KO in every second of the fight. Um, I know he is 39 years old, pushing 40. But we are at heavyweight, and that is okay. Derek Lewis is the underdog here, too. So you know when Derek Lewis is the underdog, you know what you got to do. Denise, also a very powerful striker. Good kickboxing, um, good leg kicks. He is live and dangerous early. He does kind of fade as the fight goes on after that. Good takedown defense, but this fight's staying on the feet. Tough and durable, but Lewis just needs to land one shot. We all know that. Going to go with Lewis here to win by knockout. I think he gets it. I don't know if it's going to be the first round. I don't know if it's going to be the second round, and I don't know if it's going to be the third, but I think Lewis is going to win. Um, not super impressed with Denise whatsoever. This is a huge, huge step up in competition for him as well. And Lewis has fought guys like this before, and he's knocked him out. 
So give me Lewis to win by knockout. I am kind of shocked that he Lewis is that much of a dog. I don't think Denise is all that better or not. I don't think Denise is better at all right now. So it is what it is. Maybe he'll prove me wrong, but I'm going to go Derek Lewis. KO shot in the first or second round. There's your KO right there. Coleman event going to be a fun fight. Rose Namanunas versus Aaron Blanchfield. We know both of these two fighters very well, but Rose is a very good striker, good technical striker, good kicks, good um, punching, straights right down the middle, good countering. Striking is very good, very good uh, grappling as well, but she likes to keep it on the feet. Um, she probably will want to keep this fight on the feet as well. Good cardio, good durability as well. Aaron Blanchfield, very good grappler. Her uh, takedowns are pretty good, good wrestling. She does have a good submission game when she's on top. Her striking has improved, which is good to see, but I just don't think it's quite there yet. She is still very young, though. Um, she can be a little hittable on the feet, but she's very durable, uh, very tough, good cardio, too. So five-round fight. Again, I want to point that out, too. And in a five-round fight, I'm going to go with uh, Rose here all day. I think she wins this fight. If it's five, three rounds, could be a different story. Five rounds, love me some Rose here. Um, she probably will get taken down, but she's. Not, I don't think she's going to get submitted. Rose is a very good grappler, and uh, she'll be, probably either stay safe or work her way back up. But on the feet, it's going to be night and day. Rose is going to outstrike her. Uh, she just needs the stuff to take down. So, Again, early on, maybe Blanchfield will start looking good in the early rounds, but I think once round three hits, I think Rose is going to start to take over and win the fight. So give me Rose to win by decision. Um, if there is a finish, maybe it's the Blanchfield side by sub, but I just don't think Rose is going to get sub. So I think she'll, like I said, play it safe, stay safe, and uh, win the striking on the feet, and that's what's going to get her done. Probably a 48-47 or 49-46 decision, but... I like Rose here a lot. And we got the main event, Brandon Brandon Moreno versus Amir Albazi. So right off the bat, Albazi hasn't um, fought in about a year and a half. I don't think he won that fight against Kai Carl, but that's a different story. Brandon Moreno is a very good striker. He's very tough. He's very durable, solid wrestling and grappling. Um, he can be a little hittable at times. He had a little bit of a rough go at it as of late, but he's fighting the top of the top guys. Um, very good boxing, good cardio, all that good stuff. And Amir Albazi is very well-rounded, very good grappler, um, solid striking. He's got good submissions, pretty good takedowns. He hasn't really fought the top guys yet except Kai, but I don't think he won that fight. Um, he's had some injuries and stuff going on, which I think that's why he hasn't really fought too much. Maybe some, I don't remember exactly what injuries, but I know it was some injuries. Um, but this is the toughest fight as of yet for him. And not to say that he can't, pass it but i think brandon moreno wins this fight um you know moreno like sometimes does make some fights closer than you think or want but um five round fight again what's the kai fight five rounds let me look real quick but i think in a five round fight i mean moreno's had have has had so many five round fights yeah it was five round fight um so at least Al um albazi has a five round fight under his belt, but Moreno has more, way more. So got to go with Moreno with the experience. I think he's going to be able to keep it on the feet. And I think he's just going to be the better striker for five rounds. I know it's not the greatest breakdown, but I think that's what happens. So give me Moreno to win. I'm going to say it by decision. And uh, again, like I said, I think there's going to be a lot of decisions on this one, but probably won't end that way. But it is what it is. I like Moreno though in the spot. But all right, that is the 14 fights for this coming weekend's UFC Edmonton. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I uh, made it a little bit of a shorter video this time. And um, don't forget to tune in Wednesday nights uh, for Defend Your Units. Um, me and Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets always go over our picks and best bets and stuff on Wednesday nights. So definitely check that out. Hit the like button on your way out, please, and thank you. Um, Saturday show. I'm not sure if we're going to do one this time, but we'll, I will let you know Wednesday. So if you want to come on out and let us know, we'll do our uh, live show bet as well. I know last time we lost it because uh, Armin got KO'd, but we're going to start fresh. We'll see what happens here. So definitely appreciate you watching and we will see you next time until then. Happy fight night.